My name is Lainey and welcome to my blog, Bite Size Breakdown. Welcome back. This is video number six out of 10. So we're slowly but surely getting through our list here. And today we're going to be talking about The Conjuring. So without further ado, let's get into it. The Conjuring follows the real-life story of the Perrin family as they move into their new home in Harrisville, Rhode Island. After increasingly more frequent and dangerous paranormal events, they reach out to renowned demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren in the hopes of saving their family. Lots of directors pledge allegiance to old-school horror flicks like The Exorcist. James Wan is one of the few capable of making something worthy in its influences. This ghost story, par excellence, works from the same true life sources that gave us the Amityville horror. In the early 1970s, paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farming, visit a Rhode Island family who believe their home is haunted. The Conjuring isn't merely a spot-on period recreation. It's a fiendishly effective throwback to 70s-style studio horror, back when methodical pacing and an icy tone trumped cheap gore. Stately, sophisticated dread permeates every frame, with Juan devilishly toying with his audience as they jump at every creaky floorboard and random trip to the super creepy basement. So for my initial thoughts on this film, it was one, yet again, that I had to really throw away those biases. I had watched The Conjuring several times before. I'm well updated on all of the universe's films, and it's something that I really enjoy. But that doesn't mean that there aren't issues to be found, and that doesn't mean that I can't separate myself from the film and my thoughts on it. So I'm going to give it my best try to be unbiased. So let's get into my full review. If I had to describe The Conjuring as anything, I suppose that I would describe it as an experience. This film is unique in a way that a lot of the other movies on this list just don't really capture. I think that a big reason for this is the fact that The Conjuring was supposedly based off of a true story, of a true family, of a true plight. There's always something to be said about the emotional connection that happens when we watch something that is supposed to be a true story. We relate more to the struggles. We understand the fear more, and that is so true here. Every single instance that happens, you're able to put yourself in that family's shoes and to imagine if this is not this dramatic retelling which the film shows us, but actual people, an actual mother scared for her children's lives, actual children terrified to be around their mother, a family with nowhere to go, and a group that wants to believe them but also is having a hard time trying to figure out how to help them. All this suddenly becomes so much more terrifying under the veil that it could possibly be real. Add on to that the segment at the end where they show real life clips and photos and suddenly it becomes a hundred times more scary. You get the dramatic retelling of the story and then the actual face-to-face -face realities of what it was. I would also like to say that I feel like The Conjuring is a slow film done right. So many times we get films that either one event clashes into the next and goes so fast that you can barely even keep up, or so slow that the details that are put in there are just not even needed. And once again, I want to bring up the fact that it is a true story. So obviously, it's going in real life time. We're picking out the events out of hundreds that are important that go to further the story. And I really feel that this film captured the highlights in pacing just so well. And of course, not every movie can be perfect. There are always going to be issues in any film that you watch, even your favorite film. And The Conjuring is the same. I feel that while the true story tag does let one kind of experience the film in a different way, as I said before, it also makes one more hesitant to accept the film. You know, a lot of the time when I'm watching, I find myself wondering, is this really how this happened? Is this really true? trying to poke holes in the story and of course some of it is fabricated so not everything kind of flows together and I find that sometimes you find yourself thinking more about what is the likelihood that this actually occurred than actually feeling the scares of the movie. 
I do feel like that's an issue with the genre more so than with the film itself. You can't help the fact that people are going to question things, but I do feel that the film hit its mark in so many other ways with the pacing, with the music, with the scenery, with the horror and the tension, even just with how well the actors they chose to portray the real life people was. I mean, it was interesting seeing the likeness of the characters compared to the real life pictures at the end, which is not necessarily something that they had to do, but really just heightened how the movie hit you, the quote-unquote reality of the film. Another outfit change in this video. I've been a little busy, so it's been harder to have the time to sit down and film these, but I'm happy that I have the opportunity to sit and talk. Now, I just, I really did like this film. As I said, I tried to take a step back as I knew that I liked this film to find the flaws, and I definitely do think that it had some flaws, but I still think that it's just a really great movie. Now that I've given you my thoughts, I re reveal that on the Rolling Stones list, The Conjuring was number seven. With that being said, as I say in each and every video, after I've finished reviewing all 10 of the movies, I will create a separate video where I rank them in the order that I believe that they should be. With that being said, the next film that we will be reviewing based on the random wheel is 28 Days Later. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.